loan to go study abroad, which was like less about $5,000. The rest of it was all student uh, credit cards, uh, which were given to me very easily. All I had to do was go to the bank, say I'm a student and I need money for my textbooks. Bam, 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 filled out some paperwork. Two days later, got a credit card in my mailbox. So scary stuff. Um, definitely more like there are more regulations for 18 year olds getting credit cards today than there were back in 2009 when I was uh, 18. But still, it's scary stuff that anybody at 18 can just go and take out a bunch of debt and not really understand what they're doing. So I had to teach myself everything that I'm going to show you guys today and more. And so um, I ended up paying off the $20,000 of debt in 18 months on a teacher salary, which in New York was about $40,000. So it was not a lot, just so you know. Um, all right, <laughs> Kim said, you're speaking my truth right now, girl. I'm sure there's a lot of us right now that share this truth. Uh, so once I paid off that $20,000, I felt literally like I just wanted to tell everybody as loud as I could that I look what I just did. I just paid off 20 grand and I am poor. Like I don't make a lot of money. I don't have a trust fund. I ain't got nobody who could explain to me how money works. Yeah, I was able to do this. And if I could figure it out, you can figure it out too. You just got to have the, the motivation, the desire, and the information. And so um, for me, that the easiest way to just put this on the internet for people, I don't really enjoy writing. I've gotten into it a little more now with blogging and, and things like that. But for me, the, the easiest thing is to talk. I talk a lot and I talk fast and it comes easy to me to talk. <laughs> so I decided to just start a YouTube video um, one time to just post a couple things and then a couple more times. And then next, you know, the community on YouTube just started to grow and grow and grow. So I kind of took Miss Be Helpful a little more seriously and I started growing the channel more. I think we just passed like 40 or 41,000 subscribers on there, which is dope and amazing and I love it. Um, but I just, it just goes to show that it's not about like cloud or anything. It's about people really needing this and feeling like, oh, like this is a place where I can go to get this information because it's not taught in schools and our parents don't know a lot of the times this information to pass it to us. So where are we going to go? So that's why I think that, you know, the channel actually resonated with people. Um, and then also I just try to, you know, talk how I talk. Like obviously on my YouTube channel, I try to be a little professional because I was a classroom teacher for, for three years and I don't want parents and students who I used to teach in my school to find me and be like, Oh my God, look at Miss Miss Espina being ratchet on the internet. So I have to, keep it somewhat professional. <laughs> so, you know, I gotta, I gotta do that. Uh, but I still do try to show through who I am so that people who resonate with my background, with my story, with how I talk, with how I act, can at least see themselves reflected in the personal finance space. All right, so we're gonna jump into these root causes. Okay, that was my quick intro. The root causes why you would sign up for a webinar called Help I Have No Freaking Savings. It's either because one, you spend too much, or two, you don't earn enough. So I want you to put in the chat box right now, which one resonates more with you? Is it one, you spending too much and you know you are, or two, you're not earning enough and you know you're not, or is it both? <laughs> That's okay to put both, right? It might be both. I see a lot of both. Okay, everybody is both. <laughs> Um, it's just, it's just, that's what it is, right? It's, it's, we ha we know that there are things that we need to take responsibility for and we need to do like we're spending too much and we just need to get that ish under control. But then there's also this other part, which is systemic, which is like, we're not getting paid enough and we're doing all this hard work and we need to figure out how to change that. So there's a little bit of two, two sides to the issue, but the, the one I want to focus on today is really how, what are the things that you can do that are in your locus of control? When I was in Teach for America, they used to tell us to focus on what was in our locus of control, which was my classroom, not the school, not the hallway, not the cafeteria. In my classroom, when I close that door, this is what I can control. So I want you to think the same way. What can you control? All right, so we're gonna pause real quick because now you have submitted a one, a two, or both. So you know exactly what perspective or what lens you're gonna look at the rest of this webinar with. Is it that you're spending too much and you gotta get that under control? Or is it that you need to really figure out how to continue to manage your spending and figure out the, the earnings problem, right? At least you'll have that lens. Uh, but we're gonna pause real quick here because Berna's gonna come in for a quick early commercial break. Cause I need Hello. to Hello, yeah, oh, can you hear me? Can you see me? I see can you. you. Me? Can you see me? Okay, goody, goody. So one piece of amazing feedback we got yesterday is that we loved the commercial breaks. We love the commercial breaks from the attendee side. We love the commercial breaks from the teacher side. The teachers, I want to remind you a million times over and over and over that these teachers are doing this for free uh, in the middle of their lives and their businesses. And they felt the exact same about giving to our community the way that I did. Um, but I want to make sure that they both, they get time to breathe time to stretch. If you need to go get some water, if you need to go pee really fast and wash your hands really good, now's the time to do it, breathe and stretch. 
Um, I want to remind everybody, everyone about a couple of things. If you are putting, if you have questions for the Q and A, don't put them in the chat. There is a Q and A function at the bottom of your bar, at the bottom of the Zoom. So if you have a question that you want to ask Yanelli at the end of this, make sure you stick it in the Q and A specifically, because as you see, the chat is lady all the time, and it will get lost. Um, we are recording this uh, session. We're recording all the sessions. It will be widely available to everybody. Um, and so if you miss something, if like something doesn't make sense, you want to go back and get it, we got you. Um, and I just want to repeat what Yanelli was saying about the bit.ly. Oh, good. She put out the bottom. You are so prepared. It like stresses Hello. me out how prepared you are. Hello. So at the, at the bottom, bit.ly slash no friggin savings. That is uh, where you can get the slides to follow along. All of her links are clickable. So when she starts talking about resources, you can interact with the things. Um, and that's it. Yanelli, did you want to tell them about the, uh, the party? Yeah. The surprise? Okay, here's a quick surprise, and we're gonna do this probably in like literally the next 90 seconds because yeah. I want to, you know, give you guys all the value for your time. Mm -hmm. But what I'm gonna do is, so I read an article on Medium. It was like a blogger, I forget, Natalie, I forget her last name, but she really inspired me. It was like late last year that she decided to start these little micro loans to people, not even loans. She was just like micro funding people's passions and people's dreams and people's ideas. So if anybody who like really needed money was messaging her and then she would have like video calls with them to check up on them. And then if she decided they were worth it, she would just Venmo or cash up them or write them a check. And I was like, I want to do that. Like, how powerful would that be if I had an idea and the only thing stopping me from doing this was that I didn't have a little enough money, right? That I just had too little money. And so I wanted to do it, but I haven't really done it. And then today I was talking to Bernard and I said, you know what? Today's my chance to do it. I'm not going to be able to do video follow-up calls with you guys or anything, but I'm, I'm sure if you're on this call, it's because you're needing, you're needing some financial support and even if a little something will help. So what we're going to do is every time we pause and take a little break and drink water, I'm going to go on my Instagram and I'm going to look at all my mentions and the stories and I'm going to pick randomly somebody to get a cash prize. So this first one right now, and it's coming straight from me to you, to your Venmo. This first one's going to be $25. So I'm going to give you the next like minute and a half or two to go on here and tag me in your post and make sure you're following me because if I click you and you're not following me, I'm not going to give you my money. Um, so make sure that you're following me on Instagram. And I'm going to go through in the stories literally in like the next 90 seconds or so and pick a random person. And then I'm going to tell you who you are and you're going to DM me your Venmo so I can send you your money today. Yes. Oh my gosh. So exciting. So if you have your phone out, I know you do. Don't lie. Take a picture of where you are, what's going on. Post as fast as you can. Follow Miss Be Helpful. Tag Miss Be Helpful. She's literally looking at her mentions right now. It's a $25 giveaway out of the kindness of her heart. Um, and those mentions are going to start blowing up. I know it. If you, I'm like, what if you don't have a phone? I didn't think about that. But we are hoping that all the social media mavens right now, all the people who are, I know you took a picture of like, here I am getting my life, like watching this webinar. Now is the time to post that thing. Cause I'm That's getting right. I get so many good ones of just like, here's my computer, my computer next to my plants yesterday. And like, here I am watching Hella Helpful while I clean my bathroom. Yes, do it. Time to post it. Um, we'll give you a little bit more time to post that thing, but I mean, post it fast. It's IG stories. Right. You don't have to make it aesthetic. Exactly, it's quick, it's a quick one. All it's right, let's, I think we, are we good on, you think it's a good time to pick one? I think so. Well, let's give okay. it like 30 more seconds in case people like just hit post and okay. then like Instagram's going to start talking to you. I know probably people already tagged you. Okay. I'm going to refresh. Things. I'm going to refresh so I can see all my mentions. Okay. I promise I'm being fair. I'm going to literally give you to this minute. And then also multiple entries. I'm going to do three more during this call, three more cash prizes. The first one is a little 80, 80, $25 one, but Hey, every little bit helps. Okay. All right, here we go. Yes. No, no. Scroll on down. I'm so, All right. Your phone is so mad. <laughs> I know my phone's like, relax. Yeah. You don't have Verizon. You have T-Mobile. Relax. T-Mobile. T-Mobile in the house. Shout out if you have T-Mobile. <laughs> Trouble mobile. Trouble okay. mobile. Struggle mobile. <laughs> yes, seriously. Okay, here we go. I'm going to pick a random. I'm just going to literally randomly go through my mentions and <laughs> stop. <laughs> Kathleen Blast. Kathleen Blast. What's her ben... name? Kathleen Blast, that's her IG name. Kathleen Blast. Send me your, I'm DMing you right now. Send me your Venmo or Cash App or Zelle or Chase, I don't have Chase Quick Pay, sorry. PayPal, whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, just send it to me. Kathleen, it's so exciting. I love this. I love oh, that we're having Wait, Kath Kathleen Blast with no T, sorry. Ooh, oh, just oh, Kathleen Ka Blast. Kathy, uh, B L A S? Yes, Kathleen okay. Blast with the uh, B L A S. Yay. Okay. Just in case she's 
I don't know, watching on mute or just looking at the chat. Kathleen, right. you are our first person. There are three more chances to win this beautiful giveaway, all just conducted out of Yamilly's beautiful brain. That's so right. Get excited. Okay, cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass the mic back to you. I'm gonna spotlight you again. So I mean um, it is all you. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into these key steps, y'all. So key steps. Number one, you gotta measure. It, you have to. Number two, you have to actually commit to make it happen. And then number three is sometimes you just need more money. Okay, so we're gonna go through all of them. Let's jump in with number one. Number one is measure. What doesn't get measured doesn't get managed. It won't happen, okay? It's just not going to happen if you don't measure it. And the reason why is because measuring is the only way you track progress. So this comes from when I was a teacher, um, my superintendent and the, at the district level did a, a really large PD and they brought all these experts to come in from academia or whatever in education. And I remember this one session, it never left me and it was about data analysis. And it was specifically saying, your job as a teacher is to bring kids from whatever level they're at in reading and math and science or whatever um, at the beginning of the year and get them to advance and to increase and to progress so that by the end of the year, they are way higher at a math level or way higher at a reading ability because you've, you've gotten progress. You've increased their reading level. You've increased their math skills. And so the only way you know if you're increasing is you have to track them. You give them tests, you give them assessments, you check in on them, you give them a quiz, you ask them questions, pop up you know, informally and just to see. So because of that, oh, my screen just went, so you guys, I have, the, I have night mode on my computer, so it just went dark. I was like, <laughs> what happened? Okay, so because the only way to know how they're doing is to track their progress by giving them assessment points, that's the only way to know. And so the same thing goes with not just money, everything, everything in life. Think about it. If you want to get things done, you got to track your tasks. Otherwise, you're not going to know what you've done so far and what you still haven't done yet. So a lot of people use a to-do list of some sort or whatever time management system they use, but they're tracking their tasks with a, to -do, with a list of tasks. You track your time with a calendar. If you tell somebody you're going to be somewhere at a certain time, you better put that on your calendar because if you don't, you know you're going to forget and it's not going to happen. We, we commit ourselves to all these things, right? So we have to, you know, you're tracking, you're tracking what you're doing, what you've done, how long you're going to do it for with the calendar. You track goals with a journal. A lot of people write and they journal about their goals for the new year or their goals for the month or their daily goals. How do you track it? You write it down in a journal and then you go back every day and you look and say, wow, look how far I've come. I used to have these little itty bitty baby goals and now my goals are big and ambitious, right? You get better at making goals because you're tracking the goals with a specific thing, with a journal. You track steps with a Fitbit. I, I literally, when I was a teacher, I used to get like 25, 26,000 steps in a day because I was up on my feet all day long, up and down the stairs, picking up kids, dropping them off at recess. So I was able to quickly see and track. Yesterday, I didn't have as many steps as today and I could see my progress. Same thing with food. A lot of people track their food intake for whatever reason, either because you're dieting or fasting, because you're trying to uh, reach a weight goal or because what you're trying to eat healthy, you know, whatever it is, portion control, you track food intake with calorie counting. You have to have some sort of system to track your calories and count them. Otherwise, you don't know how many calories you ate and you don't know how much you have left to eat for the rest of the day. Same thing with performance. This could be academic performance. You, you know, give the kids a test in class to see how, where they are. Or it could be uh, athletic performance, right? Athletes, they have performance tests and drills that they have to do to see, can I do more today? More, can I dribble faster today than I did yesterday? Can I make more three-pointers today than I did the day before, right? Like that athletic performance gets tracked with performance tests. You track savings with a budget. It's the same type of thing. You cannot know where you are, unless you know where you've been and where you wanna go. You gotta have this written out, a plan, very specific and detailed, so you know how many dollars have you spent, how many do you still have left to spend, and have you covered all your bases that you have to cover? Now, I already know, some people are already thinking like, wait, did she say budget? Is this gonna become, I thought this was a savings webinar. She said budget, this is a budgeting webinar? Oh, I'm out. That's not what I thought this was gonna be about. Budget, nobody likes the word budget. Nobody likes to budget. And that's true, I, I get it, I feel you. I personally myself did not like to budget. But you, if, there, if, if there's a reason why you're on this call today, my best guess, my bet, my money would be to bet that it's probably because something's going on with the budget. Either it doesn't exist, it's wonky, you know, you need some, some support to tighten it up, but something is probably related to the budget, okay? So what I want you to do is, and be completely, honest because ain't no point in lying i used to tell my kids this all the time in my classroom if you lie you lie to yourself you're not lying to me you're not lying to nobody but yourself so don't lie 
but put in the comments in the in the chat box right now honestly a yes or no you budget consistently consistently okay i bet there's going to be 80 to 90 percent no's and 10 to 15 percent 10 to 20 percent yeses <laughs> damn i got a hell no come on half and half that's that's a no that's a no. What's up, budget? Ay, Dios mío. Okay. So you see, we got some yeses, which is great, right? Budget who? <laughs> oh, Lord. Consistently, I've never heard of her before. I'm so tired of y'all. I'm done. I'm, we're done with this call right now. Uh, every dollar sees me daily. Yes, Joely, do it, mama. That's how you do it. You got to be up in your money because if not, you're not going to have none. Okay. So because of the situation with the budget, I can tell you guys one thing. Before I started budgeting, I did not know what the problem was, why I didn't, couldn't possibly save. I was spending so much money constantly, always money going out, and I, and I couldn't remember where it was going. So then I would look at my bank account and be like, wait, what? I got $61 left. I just got paid. I just got like $1,200 from my last paycheck two weeks ago. What happened? Like, I, where did that money go? Or even a week ago, right? So if you're not tracking it, if you don't know where it's going, it's literally just going to disappear. It's going to walk out the door, and you won't have a clue where it's going. You won't have any control over that. So it is so, so, so important that everybody in here who put no, I need you to believe me when I tell you that that is the reason why you are here today. It might have something to do with earnings as well, and we are going to cover that, but that's this part of the problem. This part of the problem, the biggest part of the problem is that you are not budgeting. And I'm so glad that you took the first step, which was to type into the chat box, no, which is to admit that you are not doing it. Because that is the first step, is to say, no, I'm not budgeting. And that, and that is bad. <laughs> that is what's hurting me. That's why I'm not saving. That's why I'm not where I want to be. You've got to just look in the mirror and say to yourself, you're not budgeting. You know you're not budgeting. And that's what you did in the chat. Thank you. That's great. But now you have to take that next step, which is, and you got to start. You have got to start. <laughs> Bernie is at, Berna says she's at church. Yes, that's right, girl. You didn't think you signed up for church? Sorry, I didn't tell you. That's true. It's church right now. Okay, so now is the perfect time to start. It's literally the perfect conditions. I could not ask for, I mean, I know that some people are really struggling, but I'm telling you right now, in the thick of that struggle, there is a beautiful thing happening. There's a beautiful thing happening that is allowing a lot of people to find the right environment to start budgeting and to start saving. And I want to see, what, what do you guys think that the reason might be that this time, this awkward, uncertain, weird time where like, Hamilton referenced the world turned upside down. We don't know what's going on, but it's the perfect time to take advantage of what's happening and start budgeting and saving. Possible recession, because you ain't gonna go nowhere. Quarantine, Rona, <laughs> I love this. Yes, okay, so you guys hit the nail on the head. First reason, we in quarantine. You ain't going nowhere, mama, sorry. You're not going to the club. You're not going to get your nails done. Sorry if you need a fill-in, boo. You're gonna be struggling for a few weeks. You're not getting that fill-in. You're not going to a hair salon. You're not going to the movies. You're not going to the concerts. You're not going to that happy hour. And sir, you are not going to that meetup. You're not going to the barbershop. You are not going to go chill with your boys. It's not happening because we are in the house. The good thing about that is it gives you time and it gives you money. The money that you would normally be spending on all those things, you are no longer spending. So you need to reprioritize those dollars that usually go to those things and prioritize them and move them to the savings category and not the spending category. So that's the first reason why this is a great time. Second reason, tax refund soon come. I know some of y'all already got your tax refund. I personally have not filed my taxes yet. Embarrassing, I know, but I just, I'm dreading it. I keep putting it off. This is, this is a perfect time when you get a check to, you know, to, to, to take advantage of that and use that nice little lump sum to start saving, okay? And then even if you're like me and you're dreading taxes because you know that you're not going to get a refund check because you're going to have to pay taxes. I know I pay taxes almost every year. I know I'm going to pay taxes because I do a lot of like side gigs and they give me 1099s as a contractor, which means that that, un that money that I'm earning is untaxed. So when I file taxes, I have to pay that. So because I do all these side gigs and, you know, a lot of different projects that don't pay me tax income, pay me untaxed income, I usually owe a tax bill, which means tax bills soon come. But even if that's you, even if you're like me, we're still lucky. This is still a good time for us because the tax refund deadline got pushed to July 15th. So even though normally we would have to pay it April 15th, we got May, June, July, three whole extra months, 90 days of extra time to make that payment. 
So this is literally the perfect conditions. It's just like the oven is on 450 ready for you to put whatever you're about to bake in there. <laughs> the environment is ready for saving, okay? All right, so I know some people out there already like, wait, but I'm spending more. This doesn't make sense. Or I just lost my job. How's she gonna say this is the perfect conditions and environment? You didn't lose your job, so you don't know that this is really a tar terrible environment for me. This is not a great environment. I hear you. We're gonna talk about specific strategies for that. I promise, I promise. But, we, but even then, you still have to do all these preliminary steps because you can't come out the womb and start walking. You gotta crawl first before you can walk. So before we can get to those bigger issues, you gotta get to the root causes, okay? All right, so the first thing that I did was I started to look online for what is this budget situation? What is this that, that it looks like? And the first thing that blew my mind about budgeting was that the way I thought I had to do it and I was kind of trying to do it this way was to write down the a dollar amounts that I needed to pay. So I'd be like, okay, my rent is you know $850, bam. That was back when I had a roommate, okay, guys, in Brooklyn, which was a few years back before all the gentrification. So it was affordable. That's not my rent anymore. But back then I would write down, okay, $850 for rent, my cell phone bill, $90, okay, uh, this, this much for that. And I would just write down all the dollar amounts and add them up. But what I realized was if you keep doing that, you're focusing on the dollar amounts that you're spending. And what you should be doing is trying to reach a goal. So for me, I started to set goals around percentages. What is the percentage of my earnings that I am comfortable spending on rent? Am I okay with my rent being 70% of my total income? That sounds nuts to me, but if you're comfortable with that and you're okay with having 30% left for your other things, fine. But you need to know that your rent is 70% of your income. You need to know that first before you can decide if you're okay with that. So the first step is to flip your, your, the way that you think about budgeting from dollars to percent. And I know it involves a little math, but I promise you, percentages is money. Money is percentages. Math is money and money is math. It all lives in the world of money. So if you want more money, you gotta want more math. Okay, you just, you got to get a little bit comfortable with switching between percentages and dollars and, uh, and cents and, you know, um, decimals, because if not, you're always going to be like, oh, math, oh, and that's going to keep preventing you from welcoming more money into your life of abundance. So you got to be okay with the math because the math means more money. Okay, if, if you need some help with percentages, hit me up, DM me and I will, I promise you, I taught fourth grade, I taught percentage and decimal conversions and fractions, multiplying fractions and dividing fractions. C come on, I got you. Just, just let me know. Okay, we'll do a, a little review. But there's a problem with this budget here. And I wonder if I'm hot. Oh my Lord, I'm hot as hell up in this house. Okay, I, if you recognize the problem in this budget, type it into the chat box while I grab some water because I'm dying. Look and see if you notice what's the problem with this budget. Ding, 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 Leslie, Amy, Anya, Deanna, Carol. There's no savings. If you don't put it in your budget, it's not going to happen. The same way if you don't put the event you want to go to on your calendar, it's not going to happen. Why? Because the time is going to come and you're going to forget. And why would you not put a job interview on your calendar? Why, right? So why would you not put savings in your budget? It doesn't make sense. If you wanna, you wanna make sure that it's gonna get done, you better include it. And so that's why you have to include savings. When I first started doing all of this stuff, I started doing 50, 30, 20. That was my super simple basic budget. And I have a YouTube video about it on my channel, which is 50% of everything that you earn in a month should go to your fixed expenses and your needs, things that you literally cannot survive without that. Um, you know, food. You need food and water. You need to pay your lights, your bills, your, your gas, right? You need, you need these things to be running for you to be able to have a functional life, you know, well, here in uh, this third, uh, first world country. Uh, first world problems, if, you, if the light goes off, oh my God, big deal. And DR happens all the time. It's fue la lu. But here, you know, we freak out if the light goes out and we can't pay our light bills. So we have to think about what do you need to do to make sure that those things are paid? Your rent, your food, your bills, utilities, insurance, your transportation. Those are things that you need to be able to do to get to work and back to live your life. So 50% of your money goes to that. 30% of your money is going to go to other things, things like fun things like trips, movies, hobbies, shopping, self-care, subscriptions, entertainment, things that are just fun. You don't, you don't have to worry about feeling guilty about this. It's whatever you want to put your money towards, okay? Whatever you want. And then 20% is going to be the last little chunk that's literally one fifth. So just dividing all your money that you earn by five to get 20% would be emergency savings, any debt that you have, so a debt payoff plan, and a 401k, so investing essentially for your retirement and for your future. So 
Right now, the reason why I said that, that uh, it's a ripe environment for starting this whole process is because it, just because of the conditions that we in with this COVID business, you get a whole different look at this, at this budget. You're just cutting left and right. You, you can't take no trips. You ain't going to the movies. What hobbies, honey? You better have in the, it better be in the house. You know, no more shopping outside, right? And I know a lot of people are going to say they're still shopping on Amazon, which we will address later. Self-care, going out to get a massage, going out to get some bubble tea. No, boo, you're not doing that. Subscriptions, you can cut, okay? Entertainment that you were doing to go out and have fun all the time. No, no more, no mas. Transportation, where? Where? You are not going anywhere. So this, this is pretty much why once you start cutting all of these things that you're forced to cut because of the quarantine, you're going to see all of these extra dollars that you're like, wow, I have extra dollars. Where do these dollars usually live? Oh, usually they, they go out the door. So this is an opportunity to take them and repurpose them and put them towards what you need right now, which is savings, okay? All right, so we're gonna address the shopping business because I know there's somebody out there who said they were uh, shopping on Amazon and spending more. You gotta say nah, I'm good. You got to just say no. I'm telling you because one of the things that I had to do before I started actually getting serious about budgeting was change the mental, the mindset. That's the first reason why you're probably not budgeting because your mindset can't get you to do it. Either you don't believe it's actually going to work. You've tried it in the past and it didn't. And so you don't want to try again because you're de demotivated, right? You don't have, you don't have a, any energy to try again or the desire to try again, or because you literally cannot say no. You're like, you're, you're addicted to spending and that was me i was obsessed with shopping i would go and buy even if it was a candle or some lotion just to buy something every single day my mom used to say to me when i was um, younger um el dinero te pica en la mano like that means if you have money in your hands and you're holding it it, it starts to itch you have to spend it you have to let it go because if you hold it it itches your hands you have to get it was like you can't keep money <laughs> like you need any reason to get rid of it and so for me, that was a big, big, big reason why I had to get serious about admitting that I was addicted to spending money and I needed to cut it out. So I had to say no, all right? Cancel that Amazon because you ain't buying nothing for a while. And if you're watching stuff on Amazon and you're watching stuff on Netflix, you know what that is. It's you, right now, you need to devote time to figuring out your savings, to figuring out your plan, to getting your life to a place where you're happy with it. And that takes a lot of time and takes a lot of mental energy. And if you're giving all your time to Netflix, and to Amazon and to all these other companies, you're giving them your time, you're not getting anything back in return. So you have to start changing the way you budget, not just your money, but also the way you budget your time. You have to start putting your time, invest it into things that are giving you something back. And so for me, that was the first thing I did. I cut all the spending, I stopped shopping, no more watching stuff on the TV that was not going to help me become better in any way and shift and prioritize things that would. Discovery minimalism, um, Holly says, yes, girl, that was one of mine for sure. The first thing that I did when I was like, oh, I, what am I going to do? I'm not going out no more. I, I'm not going happy hours. I'm not going to brunch anymore. I'm not going out to the movies because I'm on a budget and I can't, I can't afford to do those things anymore. I'm not getting my nails done anymore. I'm not buying makeup anymore. I'm literally in the house. And now with the quarantine, oh my God, I'm just depressed. So what am I supposed to do? Just sit around? Oh my God. And just, this is going to be horrible. I, I hear you, but it's not that you're not doing anything and you're depriving yourself from everything. Humans are naturally curious. We are naturally curious. When we're little, we want to touch the stove. We want to touch everything. We want to eat everything. We're, we're so curious as humans. So take that curiosity and deep inside of you, it's there somewhere. Find it, pull it out of you and apply it to learning things that are going to help you grow and get better. For me, that was learning how the hell am I going to fix my money problem? I got $20,000 of debt and I only earned 40 k How am I going to Take what I earn, and that's you know before taxes, and pay off almost half of what I'm making is going straight to debt. That was really hard for me to swallow, so I had to learn. I started reading all of these books, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you what every single book is about and it's drone on and on and on. I'm just telling you, these are some of the best ones that I recommend to getting started because they're, they're not just about money. They are about money, but they also have this other motivational element about changing your life and, and really getting serious about who, becoming the person that you want to be. Okay, and so... If you've never heard of these books, definitely check them out as a treat for you. As this is an extra treat on top of the money treat. The ones that have a green little highlighter in the background. Oh, my lighting is weird on my computer. Hold on. The ones that have the little green lighting in the background, those, if you click on it on your PDF version, you have the PDF copy of that book. So you got three free books today. Don't tell nobody because I'm pretty sure that it's illegal to give you guys these PDF versions since um, you're supposed to buy it yourself. But that's okay because... This is for us. And I know y'all, 
we're good. You're not going to go tell everybody, but you just got three free books. Okay. So click on the picture of the book and it will open up the PDF uh, document. And that way you can take some time now during the quarantine where you ain't got nothing else to do and read these books because these books changed my life. Okay. I speak, I paid $9 for women and money at Dwayne Reed in New York one day. And I, literally that was the best $9 I ever spent. Cause I did her six month um, program and I paid off all of my debt from like my, my student loans and a couple credit cards. And then I just got, I went ham and I went in and paid it all off. So I think that if it can help me motivate myself and change my mindset from becoming, from going from being a shopaholic and being obsessed with brand names and getting my nails done and my hair done and having Jordans and spending money like crazy and changing that mind into the mind that I have today, which I literally, if you would have told 16, 17 year old Donnelly, like, girl, when you're 30, you're going to have this brain. You're going to think this way. I would be like, get out of here. You stop taking drugs. I never would have believed you. Right. So it, because it's changed me that way, I believe it can change you too. You just got to put in that work. All right, more free 99 stuff because I know what you're thinking is like, oh, she expects me to just be in the house reading all the damn time. That's boring. I want to watch stuff sometimes. Sometimes I do want to Netflix and chill. I hear you, okay? But there's other things that you can watch for free instead of paying $15 every month when you don't have no savings right now, boo. You need to put that $15 into your high yield savings account every month and not give it to Netflix. They rich enough. They good, boo. They got a lot of shareholders. They got a lot of angel investors, okay? They're good. You, they don't need your $15. So what you can do is watch things that are really going to help you to be in line with that person that you want to be. For me, that was like, who are other people that did crazy ish? Like just crazy, like things that I can't even imagine. Like David Goggins, I found out about him through impact theory. If you click on the impact theory picture, you'll get a link to the show. It's literally what I'm binging these days and it's free. It's on YouTube and it's the best. Like I literally go on there and I find out about these amazing people. Sean Stevenson found out about Marie Forleo. I found out about um, David Goggins who literally was running a, a marathon, okay, like 100 miles running and broke his foot, wrapped his foot and kept running, broke his other foot, wrapped the second foot and finished the 100 mile race with two broken feet. Now, I'm not here to tell you that you need to run a race, break your both of your feet and still finish the race. Otherwise, you're just making yourself a victim. Absolutely not. Clearly, David Goggins is some heroic otherworldly type pee on some next ish but the point is that type of stuff it makes me feel like i if he did that i could save a hundred dollars i can like come on you know it just makes you feel like ali like you're ready to go in the ring and fight right Th that's what you need in order to believe that you can do this because the first hurdle that you're going to face when you sit down to do a budget is you're going to believe that you can't do it or you're going to believe you don't want to do it. So how do you fight that? Believe you want to do it and you want to do it. The only way to do it is to get motivated, to get inspiration from other people who've lived extraordinary lives and done other things that, you know, that will inspire you. And it inspired me. All right. And then Overcast is a free podcast app that I use. One of the things about me that you guys can probably tell, I talk really fast. And the thing that I wish I could do is when other people are talking to me, they talk too slow. And I want to just hit like 2x, like while they're talking in real life. I'm like, I just want... I just want to speed them up because, oh my God, they just talk too slow for me. This is why my people down South, I love you guys, but I go to Atlanta and Texas. I go there to visit and then I come right back to New York city because y'all talk way too slow down South to me and y'all have way too much sweet tea. There's too much sugar in that tea for me. But the point is I know that about me. So when I listen to podcasts, I always go in and I speed them up for people like us who grew up in environments that are fast paced, that are, you know, there maybe not a lot of resources, but Hey, we thrifty. Okay. We resourceful and we're quick witted. And sometimes we talk really fast. <laughs> and so sometimes you might not feel that the book is engaging or the podcast is engaging you, but it might just be that it's too slow. So for me, one of the big things I did, I started to speed up my podcast 1.25, 1.5 X, 2 X. And now I can listen to it. it. It sounds more like me, like a little faster, you know, and I can not fall asleep while I learn. <laughs> so that is things I recommend. And again, both of the links are here. So just click on the images and that will take you to the free thing. All right. Best budgeting apps. I know once I start talking about budgeting, everybody's first question is, okay, well, what apps do you recommend I use? What should I use? Honestly, I must, before I even tell you guys about these, it doesn't matter. That's the real answer. Obviously you want to make sure it matches your personality, but the re reality is what matters is that you are doing it consistently and that you're not going to quit. It, other, other than that, it doesn't matter. And you could just easily use this exercise um, analogy, right? If I wanted to get fit, right? I want to have a six pack. I could do, I could get on a bunch of different programs, right? I could do a workout at home. I could find YouTube videos. I can follow uh, Masi Arias on Instagram. I could do P90X. I could go with Shanti and do the insanity one. I could do Beachbody. 
It doesn't matter which one of them I do. If I stick to it and I do it every day and I do whatever they tell me the rules are and the instructions and I follow that plan, it's going to work and I'm going to get a six pack. And they're going to ask me what I did and I'm going to tell you. You can be like, oh, I have to do insanity too. No, you can do anything you want. The point is you just have to stick to it. So I'm a Virgo and that's why I know what works for me is like I got to be able to control everything. So the best budgeting app that I know works for me and I, I used it for a while and then I pulled back and I went into my own spreadsheet just because it stopped being free for me. <laughs> when I was a student, it was free and then it wasn't and I didn't want to pay. But anyway, the point is um, everything on here has it's either accessible to you for free if you're a student, accessible to for you for free in general, or you got to pay like less than 100 bucks for everything on here. So Mint is free, best, it's most popular overall. Um, and so that's on there. Everything that's underlined in this entire presentation deck is clickable. So if you click on any of the underlined words, you will go straight to their website. Okay, so Mint, YNAB is great if you have type A personality, if you're a Virgo, or sometimes Aries and Capricorn, y'all be like that too. Envelopes is the best one for cash style budgeting. Wally is best for free and just budgeting. Like you, you don't link it to like, you know, investing accounts or anything like that. It's very basic, just budgeting. Wally, it's also free. Good budget is good for couples. So if you and your partner want to budget together and get y'all love, money, and all your stuff going on together, good budget, okay? And then pocket guard is for people who um, want to stop themselves specifically from overspending. So that all my ones out there, when you put one, I'm spending too much and that's the problem. <clears throat> Write down pocket guard, click on that pocket guard link and go there because that sounds like it might be right for you. Okay. All right. Let's look at people who don't want to do it digitally. People who don't want the apps. Maybe you just want to do it manually. Like I ended up switching over to a manual version. Actually, I will show you what I was doing. Let me look at my, let me look at my Google. Oh, actually, I already pulled it up right here. Um, here's my 2017 budget. All right. You can see... Uh, July here, 27. Yep. So this was my July budget. Um, I had four checks that month. Oh no. I had two checks, had some side money from a gig I did in Philly and I'm, Ooh, I do not encourage this. I was, I must've went to Vegas that month and made $250 gambling. Don't, don't do that. But anyway, the point is, Hey, I added it to my budget. And then over here, you can see all the paychecks get accumulated. I made extra money from affiliate links and from my YouTube channel. I put that in there. So my total income was $3,966. The first thing you see in my budget, savings, which in parentheses says divide income by 10. So you can either put a little formula in there, or which you know, I did, or you can manually enter it. Then my Roth IRA. At this point in 2017, I was already going with my Roth IRA. I think I started it in like 2015. Rent was $1,200 at that point. I wish it was still $1,200. All my bills, okay, basically you can see here, I didn't spend any money on clothes and shoes. I didn't spend any money on toiletries. I decided like this month, those things don't matter because I want to go to Vegas, right? Like these are the kinds of decisions that you make when you're in control of your money and you get to sit down and just love your money so much that you are going to give it the best advice you can. You're going to tell it where it's going to go and what it's going to do for you. Um, I can't believe my Vegas trip was so, was so cheap there, 575. Anyway. So basically, there, there you go. That's that link. That one is available right here uh, where it says Miss Be Helpful. That's my, my example of my budget. There's also cash envelopes, which that's a YouTube video that shows you how to do it. There's also First Gen Money, which is Danny. She's on Instagram. I love her. I signed up for her newsletter and got an amazing free spreadsheet, which it gives you like the year in review and everything. I just thought hers was great. It's my new personal favorite that you can get for free anywhere. So that one's linked there. And then a free zero based budget that I used at one point because it's just a one pager and it's super simple, but I, mm, I didn't love it. So I stopped. But anyway, if you like it, if you want to try it, take it. All of these are free. And again, everything that's underlined clicks you and takes you straight to the resource. All right. So break number two, let's do it, Berna. I'm, dying. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I got to do this video thing and I'm the Oz for two seconds and we're back. Hello everyone. Okay. Just to recap on all the amazing things that Yanelli has said. First of all, one, I've decided to name my first child Yanelli. Two, <laughs> at which church do you preach and are there streaming services? And what time is service on Sunday? Live church, Miss Be Helpful's YouTube every Sunday. Let's do it. I mean, I just, this is, there are so many comments. I don't know if you saw them, you know, like so many comments of people being like, where is this girl from? She's so funny. She's so hype. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, y'all, this is the reason that we created Hella Helpful because yes. hype and excitement and relatability and 
like financial educators who are going to talk about your astrological science, financial educators that are going to speak in your language, they exist. And that is why we put Hella Helpful together so we could all be in one place and be like, look, we got you. Like yes. the Avengers, the, the last scene of the Avengers, all the ladies come out at, at once. That is literally the energy that we're trying to bring to you for this. So, 100%. I love that. I'm so freaking grateful. Yanelli has broken it down for so many things. And we're deep into budgeting, of course. And I, I really want to like, like double punch on the thing you, uh, you said where you were like, you thought you were coming to a savings workshop. You are. We have to talk about budgeting. It isn't just pulling money out of your butt. It isn't just like, how's money going to fall out of the sky? Even though she's out here literally giving us cash and books <laughs> like a queen. <laughs> You don't get a misbe helpful in your pocket every single day. You do have to learn how to budget. And so I'm so glad that you're like beating the budgeting drum and we can call it whatever we want. People were dropping different names for budgeting, what they call budgeting, spending plan, things like that. Call it whatever you want. But it's like you said, setting up a plan, measuring it because you cannot manage it. Just so, so, so many gems. Um, yes. I, I'm going to keep, because people keep asking, I'm going to keep reminding you bit.ly slash no friggin savings. That is where you're going to find the PDF. You can see it on the bottom of the screen. Every single yes. slide, you can see it on the bottom of the screen. Just in case you forget, you can type yes. that in. Yes. You'll, you'll be able to get the PDF of this um, whole presentation. I saw that somebody asked like, oh my gosh, can we get a copy of the budget, like the actual budget that you just shared? That is a clickable link inside the presentation too, right? Yeah. So that's another as well. It's all in there. The free books that she's trying to give you because she's over today, that's also in there. So definitely get up in there. Get up in that, uh, that PDF, bit.ly slash um, no friggin' savings. Okay, here, if you guys go to the slide that says the best budgeting apps, the links, everything underlined is a link. So when you see an underlined word, click it. And when you go to the ones that I talked about, where you see cash envelopes, first gen must be helpful, you click it and it will take you to the tracker. It's all there. So whatever resource you want to try, you want to use, it literally just click the word that's underlined and it'll take you there. That's a beautiful, this whole presentation is a sex. I hope that's not inappropriate. <laughs> I am the financially aroused at the moment. Um, so fantastic. <laughs> so we are going to take this next opportunity, this second break to pop back in to that giveaway that we were doing in the beginning. Okay. So if for those of you who just joined or don't know the rules, what Yanelli is doing is she has a pot of money that she's been meaning to give away like philanthropically, like Mrs. Moneybags. Um, and she's giving away little pieces of it during our commercial breaks. What you have to do to win the money is post to your IG, IG stories, mention her somewhere, post what you're, you know, the, I'm doing this webinar, I'm watching the thing, post about, you know, Lee, about this workshop, tag Miss B helpful, and she's gonna randomly go through her mentions on IG and pick a person to receive money. And how much money we're we giving away this time? Uh, let's do $50. I'm gonna do. Fifty dollars. I feel like we're on the, like our own game show. It's like a, it's right? like a savings workshop and a game show. Fifty dollars, fifty dollars, fifty dollars, fifty dollars. Fifty dollars, fifty dollars, fifty dollars. You would be such a good. Um, forget. I'm sure someone told you this before. You would be so good at auctions, like, but like popping on people at the same time, making them feel stupid, and then educating them. And anyway, I guess I'm the sell you. So oh, I should have been an auctioneer. I've learned. Yes, so much. that's the word auctioneer. Okay, so what you should be doing right now going to pee, get a drink of water. But if you want this $50, take a picture, post, tag Miss Be Helpful, and just send it off right now because she That's is going through her mentions. And when we say go, she's just gonna like randomly click through all of her IG story mentions, stop on somebody, and you're gonna get $50. Via oh, also make sure you're following me because if I click on you and you're not following me, you ain't getting my money. Yes, post on IG story, tag Miss Be Helpful, follow Miss Be Helpful. That is what's gonna get you into this, into okay. this place. All right, yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah. give me like another 30 seconds and then I'm going to pick a winner here. Yes, another 30 seconds. I'm just, I'm having so much fun in this chat. There are so many great, helpful people. My favorite thing is people answering each other's questions in the chat. Yeah. Because it's like, let's all focus on what you're saying. Somebody asked a question. I got you. Let's keep going. Like, it's just, it's just like a beautiful community learning environment, which makes me so happy. It really is. It really yes. is. Oh, yes. How we'll are you the feeling? next one in person. Yes. I feel great. This is feel amazing. Good. Actually, oh my God, I just saw I, a comment that says Sephora don't need me and they're cutting my credit cards and I'm done with Sephora. And somebody <laughs> said, me too. Yes. I, I stopped Sephora in like 2006, 15, 16. And look, I got, what is this? Like some, some mascara I bought at Dwayne Reed for $8. Okay. This, this little blush here was probably like maybe $7. Just this chapstick, this, this Burt's Bees chapstick right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't need, look, don't do it. 
Don't do Sephora, it. They got money. Okay, Rihanna got money. You don't need the Fenty. Sephora got more money than Rihanna. You don't need none of their, you don't need to give them your patronage. They good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, if, if at any point you have felt gently and beautifully and lovingly attacked by Yanelli in this presentation, please leave a comment. Because I don't know how many times I saw, you're presenting, how many times I saw in the chat, just like, she made this presentation for me. She's attacking me. <laughs> She's coming for me right now. <laughs> you know why? Because that was me. I'm literally just grabbing 19-year-old me and shaking her ass and telling her, don't do it. Look at me. Don't. Stop, 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 stop it. Stop, Fix stop, it. Stop. Fix it. Fix it. We are, she is coming for the, the irresponsible 19-year-old inside of all of us who's still there yes. eating hot Cheetos yes. and wondering what happened with her life. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happening. All right, here we go. I'm picking one. Random, 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 random. Uh-oh. A new mention came in. A new mention came in. Ms. D25. Ms. D25. How do you spell that? M-I-Z-Z underscore D25. D25. Send me your Venmo. I just DM'd you. Yes. Oh, we got some people. Someone's 20. Someone's like, I am currently the 19 year old. Oh, hey, boo boo. Listen, Welcome. I was you. You're so young. Look at you, little That's baby. Awesome. You're so cute. That's 19. So 19. Oh, my God. You're like, I'm a whole 11 years older, and I think I'm a grandma. Decade, baby. Whole decade. Not even 19 years. <sighs> We're helping the churins. Do you the remember? Do you remember to be 19 again? Who? The financial changes I would make. Financial oh, yes. Changes. Anyway, I would just take this one in presentation. My whole life would be different, so. Right? God, this is the type of stuff I wish I had found. Instead, I found Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman. Great, helpful, boring. Boring. <clears throat> so boring. boring. So boring. So, okay, so boring. if you are Ms. D25, uh, well, let's see. How are you doing this? Are, are you having them DM you? So I just that... DM them. I DM oh. them and said, send me your Venmo. So once I get your Venmo from in my DMs, I'm going to send you your money. Perfect, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Are you ready to kick it to the next of the the next of the presentation? It's not English. Yeah. Rest of the presentation. We're doing it. All right. So let me spotlight you, and I'm gonna go out. All right. <laughs> Somebody said yes. Bernard says hello, male. I always say too male, too pale, and way too stale. The male and pale part, you know, it's not even that serious because if you're a white too, but you got high energy and you're good and you're and you're keeping me, you're, you know, hooked on what you're saying, cool. But the problem is they're stale. That's what bothers me. They boring as hell. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and move on. The key steps. This is this is one of this is probably the most important part. We talked about number one with some measure. Now we're gonna move on to number two, which is make it happen. How are you gonna make it happen? Once you start using all these resources that I didn't put in here for free, you don't stop. That is what makes or breaks this whole thing in your life. The failure versus the success, what happened? The failure stopped and the success kept going. That is literally the only difference. Even after falling on your butt, even after messing all up your budget, not sticking to it, feeling like it's never gonna work because you can't stick to it, not stopping. That is the only way it's going to work. It's the only way you're going to make it happen. And so what I actually did, and the reason why I put this here, um, I wish I had a picture of this to show y'all like some receipts, but I promise this is real. When I lived in my old apartment with my roommate, I had two roommates, actually it was a three bedroom apartment in Bushwick and where I grew up. And um, my boyfriend at the time was in California. And when he finally came back to New York, um, he came to visit my new apartment. We're in there. He's looking at my room and he saw a loose leaf paper hanging on the wall and he was like dangling. And I ran over to the loose leaf paper and turned it around. I was like, don't look at this, this is personal. And, I, and he's like, what, is, what did it say? I was like, no, it's personal. That loose leaf paper literally said in, in like a dark marker in caps, don't stop with an exclamation point. And he's like, what the heck would he would? And it's because at that time I had all these things that I had recently started and I was like all in my high of, yeah, now I'm motivated, I'm gonna do it. But I knew there was gonna come a day where I was gonna be like, I just don't feel like posting a video today on my YouTube channel. I'm just too tired. Or I just don't feel like going over the budget today. It's, it's so frustrated. I'm so, I'm so frustrated with the whole process. I'm not where I wanna be and I still owe so much debt. I'm not gonna do it today. Just, just today, just, I'm just, it doesn't matter. And then I would look over at the wall and be like, ugh. There's the paper. It's like, it's haunting me. Don't stop. And it would remind me like, yo, don't, why are you thinking about stopping? Like, it's okay to have that thought. Let it pass. Get up and do it. 
Because in that moment, that's when you make yourself who you said you wanted to be. You either give up right then and there, or you do the David Goggins, wrap your foot and keep running. I mean, that's a little extreme. But the point is, that's how you become who you say you want to be, right? If for me, I wanted to become the person who, who don't talk about it, but I'm going to be about it. In order to do that, I had to post videos on my channel every week consistently on YouTube to grow my audience. If not, it was not going to work. And what was the point of me trying to say I'm going to be a YouTuber if I'm not going to consistently post a video every week? So I had to tell myself, don't stop. Even if it meant I was up till 2, 3, 4 in the morning editing my video to get it posted in the morning, I, I need to do it because I told myself I committed to this. And if I want it, prove it by doing it. If you want something, you're going to prove it by doing it. So how are you going to do this? How are you going to start? The first thing and the easiest thing you can do is literally get a piece of paper, literally like a loose leaf like this, get a pen, and just write down every single expense that you have for this month or for next month, you know, whatever you're planning for. Sit down, write every, every expense that you have. And then any other ones that are bills, Underline them, asterisk them, circle them, whatever you want to do. Make sure that they're separate. Highlight them. If you're like me, you got every color highlighter. And, and make a phone call. Maybe it's one a phone call a day. Maybe this weekend you just commit to doing one or two phone calls, right? Maybe tomorrow morning, the first thing you do, I mean, obviously wash your butt and uh, brush your teeth and wash your hands. But uh, then after you do that, get on the phone and call maybe the one that's the scariest. Because right now what's happening is that bill collectors are starting to do all kinds of favors for people who are consumers. Why? Because of coronavirus, right? I'm about to sound like Cardi. Coronavirus! It's literally making companies forgive people's late payments, ignore interest, you know, like bump down a minimum payment or waive your payment altogether for 60 days. Like that never happens. I wish somebody would have forgiven the interest or forgotten that I owed an electric bill three years ago when I was struggling. I, I wish, but you guys have the opportunity to literally put these payments on hold, call and take advantage. Okay. On the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, there's a little asterisk with underlined words. Again, if it's underlined, it's clickable. Who is helping us? If you click that, that takes you to a New York Times article that lists all the banks, all the institutions that are literally giving people the opportunity to not pay their credit card bill and not incur any late fees or interest. Um, freelance artists, if you're a freelancer and you lost your job or if you're a freelance artist specifically, that link has tons of resources for support uh, for freelancers, okay? So of course there's gonna be opportunities where you're gonna need some support, but you gotta start with what you can control, right? Which is what you need to pay. Call those credit card companies, call up all the things and say to them, I literally am struggling right now to just manage all of my money right now and coronavirus is not helping. What can you do for me? Can you get rid of my interest? Can you not charge me this late fee? Can you forgive this mispayment? Can you put me into forbearance on my student loans? Actually, they're already saying that they're doing that, right? All of the student loans are going to not have any interest if they're federal student loans. And then you can call and put them into forbearance or freeze them, which means that you don't have to send any payments for 60 days. Again, this ish never happens. So take advantage of it. And then once you've done that, now you have new numbers and they're lower numbers. They're smaller numbers. Smaller numbers for payments is better. Bigger numbers for savings is better. So you want smaller payments. And now after you've made your calls and you got a couple smaller payments locked in, you can sit down to make your plan for how you gonna reach that three to six month living expenses in a savings account, okay? Every dollar that you're able to save, put it in a savings account. There's four types of savings accounts. Traditional savings accounts are generally gonna be the worst because it's just like a Chase Bank, a, Bank of America, right? Wells Fargo, they're not giving you any interest. They're, they're giving you pennies, little tiny pennies for every hundred that you save in a year. You might get $100 and three cents at the end of the year if you leave your hundred and don't touch it. You, you don't want that. You want to try to at least get a dollar. Can we at least get a dollar up in here? Like one dollar, please. So tr what you want to do is try to go as high as you can. 2% is like not realistic right now, but that is the inflation rate. So that means that if you have $100 in your bank account, in order for it to still buy $100 worth of stuff in a year, you need to increase it to $102 because inflation means the prices of things are gonna go up by 2%. So you wanna make sure your money is growing as much as it can, try to get that interest rate as close to 2%. Right now, 1.5, 1 1.7, 1.8, those are all great. That's pretty regular right now for a high yield savings account. Online savings generally are going to offer you the high yield. Generally not going to be a traditional savings account. And both of those are basic savings, okay, one and two. And then number three is the money market savings account, which will give you a little bit of high interest rate, but you can withdraw less. So you can't go just taking money out willy-nilly all the time. You probably get two or three withdrawals in a month. 
and um, CDs or certificate of deposit, you freeze your money for a period of time. So six months, a year, three months, three years, and you cannot touch it. Sometimes they'll have like a minimum. And so you want to learn about all that before you decide to commit to an account or to change the account that you currently have, which you should do if you find out your savings account is giving you pennies on the hundreds. If you put $100 in it, you get 0.03 or 0.07 or 0.09. You need to turn that into at least 1.0, at least, at least a dollar. So all of these links, again, since they are underlined, they are clickable. If you click the online savings, it's going to take you to an article that tells you the high yield savings accounts that are best in March of 2020. Same for money market savings, same for CDs. And on the bottom right corner, there's a little video that I posted on my YouTube channel that says best savings accounts for 2020 with the interest rates. Um, in that video, there's the highest right now, which I believe you can get for, with no minimum, is 1.92%. That's the highest you're going to get with no minimum required. And that is at Varo bank. So that's in that video. The link is in the description box and all that. So if you, want to, if you guys want to watch that video, it's a great place to go. All right. So now that you're at that point where you realize, okay, you, you know um, what you need to do. You just actually have to start doing it. How are you going to do it? Again, all of these links here are clickable. Number one, put the time on your calendar. Because if you leave today's webinar, like, yeah, I'm pumped. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it this weekend. This weekend's going to pass and you're not going to do it. Why? Because you didn't put it on the calendar. You didn't say when you were going to do it. Saturday, Sunday, what time? Saturday at 3 p.m.? When are you going to do it? Sunday at 4.30? You have to be specific. The day, the time, the location. Where will you be when you do it? On the kitchen table? Or you can do it on the couch? In your bed? Where are you going to be? What are you going to have? Be so detailed. Picture it happening in your mind. And then when the time comes, do it. Okay? That's the only way you're going to do it. Um, no spend on social media is a great way to get started. A no spend challenge. There's so many different financial influencers. I call fin influencers. Fin influencers will do no spend challenges. You could even do one with your friends. Just start a little DM chat on Instagram and tell them, hey guys, y'all, who's in to do a no spend challenge with me for the next 30 days? No spending except for bills and food and needs. Okay, basics. So you tell them how much you're going to be spending on the things that you need, and then everything else is not allowed. And you just try really hard every day. Go in the chat. Post your progress. Today, I didn't spend no money, Al. You know, my sister tried to make me get tickets, and I didn't. Woo. Like, celebrate that. And in there, that, that momentum is going to help you so much. Friends and family doing savings competitions. How much can you save in this much time? Whoever saves the most wins or, you know, put, pull money in a little pot, like $5 per person. Everybody starts saving, and whoever saves the most gets to keep the money in the pot. Right. Like think of ways to make it competitive, make it a group activity because you're going to be more likely to, to deliver if you have that accountability budget with a dope influencer. I think if you click on that one, you're going to see somebody familiar. Hi. <laughs> there you go. So you can budget with. Verna, literally just watch her video, how she explains how to make a budget that works and do it with her. How, how amazing is that? You just sit down with a influencer that you already know and love and budget with them. They're, they're budgeting, you budget with them. Do everything they say while they're saying it, while they're doing it, okay? And then uh, Susu is another option, which for those of you who don't know what a Susu is, it's like an informal loan club. When I was little, I used to see my mom do these all the time, okay? Literally, it would be like, oh, I'm going to, after church, I have to find Marisol because she has to give me the money that she owes me for this susu. Or, oh, I have to go collect all the money for the susu. I'm like, oh, all these susus all the time. Okay. But it's true because it really does help. One is the people, the, the accountability of the people. Actually, there's a statistic, which, uh, yay, there's a statistic on the next slide that shows you saving in a group triples your chances of success. And that comes from a study done by the National Bureau of Economics. Okay. I didn't make that up. This, that they're real official. It's a whole bureau. And they made a study that shows this. You are three times more likely to succeed if you're saving in a group. So doing a susu really helps because one, you can get access to the money. If you sign up first, you get access to the money right away. And if not, you know, you wait around, but you're starting to get into the habit of putting money in and then waiting to get that reward. And once you get that big lump sum, pop it into that high yield savings account. So for those of you who don't know how the susu works, if you just go back to the previous slide and click on the susu link, it will take you to an article that will explain to you how SUSU works. Everybody puts in money every month, and then you, the money goes around from person to person until everybody has had a chance to get that loan, zero interest, and the community come through for, for you. Okay, so, oh yeah, some cultures say 
Tanda, some say Sociedad. I've heard a lot. I think it's originally like an African Caribbean thing, but it has expanded to Latinx cultures and to the, you know, Asian cultures, like so many cultures just, it works, okay? So we do it over and over again because we can't always rely on financial institutions if we don't have what they deem to be the requirements that you need, which is good credit, then they might turn you away. Well, your community won't turn you away. So always you can go back and plan a SUSU and facilitate it, but you gotta make sure the people in that SUSU are trustworthy and will come through. Don't, susu, don't do a SUSU with your cousin if you know she, does, she don't got the money and she's always you know, flaking when it comes to paying people back. Don't, you know, pick people that are going to be reliable and that are invested just as much as you. There's always a prima like that, right, Leslie? Always, always. Okay, so what else can you do? And this is going to be for my people who are like, I don't have trustworthy people in my family. Let me be real with you. My cousins, my brothers, sisters, my mom, I can't rely on them. They spend money like crazy and they think I'm crazy for trying to save. They think money is supposed to be spent buying Christmas gifts for the kids and, you know, putting money towards the house to make it pretty. This is, this is, that's how they think money is supposed to be used. And it's very hard for me to change their, their beliefs. And so if that's you, maybe it's not the family. Maybe the SUSU's not going to work for you. There's an amazing um, organization or company called Credit Build, uh, called Self, that does credit builder accounts or credit builder loans. And so the way it works, my boyfriend actually did this because he needed credit, but it also works if you need a lump sum of cash and you can't trust yourself to save it. So this is great for spendaholics and people that can't trust themselves to hold money. Le pica la mano, like my mom used to say. So they create a fake loan in your name, right? So they just say like, you know, you just borrowed $1,000. No, I didn't. You didn't send me $1,000. That's a lie. But I'm going to pretend you did and I'm going to pay it back. So every month I'm going to send them $100 for 10 months until I pay back this fake loan. Then they're going to have $1,000 collected from my payments and they're going to write a check for $1,000 and give it back to me. Right. Well, it's going to be a little less than $1,000 because they charge a service fee for the, for the system, for this whole service. But it helps you get in the habit of putting money away every month just for saving it. And then at the end, that, that amount that you save up comes sent right back to you. And every month that you're sending those payments, it gets reported to the credit bureaus. So it helps you build credit by creating payments every month and payment history and on-time payments. And you get the money that you gave them right back. They take, I think it's like a 3%, don't quote me on that. Their website is clickable on that little picture of self on the phone, on the app. If you click that image, it will take you to the website. So you can see how much is the fee, 2%, 3%, I don't remember. But my boyfriend did this and it was awesome for his credit, but also what he forgot was that he was gonna get that check. And literally one day he checked the mail, there was a check and he was like, oh snap, I forgot about this little $1,100 right here, hey. And I was like, and, <clears throat> <clears throat> directly into your high yield savings account. Thank you. Save that. Okay, so time for a last break, or is it last break? No, it's the third break. And then um, really quickly, we're going to wrap it up because I know I'm running long. And then I'm going to do one last raffle at the very end, and then we're going to be done. Okay, so first of all, thank you guys for sticking through. It's like over 14 minutes over, and everyone's like in the chat, like just in here with me. Love it. Thank you, because I could go on. But we, I promise we're going to wrap it up quickly at the end. Yep. It's, it's beautiful. What's happening in the chat is like, now we've gotten really into all of our cultural backgrounds, especially when you were like talking about the Susu, which is also Fendas, which is also somebody was like, it's this in Arabic. It's this in like, in my culture, I'm in the chat. Like, what do we call it in Tagalog? Cause I'm Filipina. I'm like, what do we call it in Tagalog? It's gotta be somewhere. But like, How that beautiful is, been, is that? Oh I know. God. Like, and some people are like, oh, I didn't write. I know what you're talking about. I didn't realize that that's like a financial tool available in my community. I love that which like that would not have come down if you were listening to some dry hella male hella pale person. I'm just saying there are resources that you have at your hands that we don't even think about doing because there's no one in front of you helping you to think about it in that way. Um, if you appreciate all the love and the energy and the like legitimate gold that Yanelli is giving you, please drop some love, some hearts in the comments right now. She could love it. I will attest like to the fact that when you are giving a webinar presentation to literally hundreds of people it but really like all you're seeing are words it is really difficult to like feel the feedback um when you know like, is talking when Kara is talking you can glance over every now and then at the chat but you really do feel like you're just sort of like giving a presentation to your dog so oh, look at look at all this all these hearts all this love all these people i am telling you like i'm trying to figure out if there's a way i can get a print out of the chat because you know like, all the love that's coming through for you is so beautiful there's like i need her as my friend yes, girl so we're, we can her. we're gonna we're gonna save the chat at the end i'll show you how to do it 
Uh, see, she, okay, first of all, I've never heard about self. That was new for me. I didn't know, know about the credit build, credit building lo like loans, personal loans. And she's like teaching me all the things about webinar, about the webinar. Background for Hella Helpful, Yanelli has been like my webinar shepherd, like my Zoom webinar shepherd, because as she said in the beginning, she literally has done this for her job for many, many years. So she's putting us all on in a lot, a lot of ways. And it goes to show that you are never done being a student ever, 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 ever. You're always learning. It's like the reason I like selfishly, one of the reasons I put on Hella Helpful is so I can take all these workshops from my smart ass friends. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Um, when, if you have a question, so you know, has a little bit more presentation, then we're going to do as much Q and A as we could fit in, try to wrap it up soon. I want to double check about like how long we have this room. I'll, I, I think it was an hour and a half, but I should be able to, ex should I be, should be able to extend it? I'll extend it. Um, so we can, we'll see, yeah, so we can follow the, uh, we can wrap it up with some Q&A. Um, if you have questions, don't put them in the chat, put them in the Q&A because we will have a separate time for that. Um, again, all these resources, everything she's showing you, bit.ly slash no friggin savings. And we're about to do installment number three of this like beautiful, special, misty, helpful giveaway. For those of you who just joined, the rules are, you take your phone right now. This is right now, it's a live giveaway. You post on Instagram stories about watching this webinar, what you've learned from Yanelli. Make it fast because in about 30 seconds, she's going to go through her mentions and pick a winner. You have to post to Instagram stories. You have to tag Yanelli at Miss Be Helpful. You have to be following Miss Be Helpful. All right. We're going to give you like a little bit of time to actually do the thing. I don't care if it's like, a, I, I'd rather see like an up the nose selfie, front facing camera thing. I don't care. Make it fast because you know he's literally going to open up her ig mentions and go -da 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 and pick somebody um how much are we doing this time 50 50 50 50 dollars over here again we're like doing the whole <laughs> auctioneer thing it's going to be 50 dollars that she's going to be giving away um this is out of the kindness of her hearts also you i don't know if you saw this but there's someone in the chat i want to say her name is i want to say their name is laura they were like hey can you do three more giveaways because i want to pay like i want to give up my money I want to be the person giving the money for the next giveaway. And I was like, oh my God, okay, let's do it for another uh, chat. So for tomorrow, for uh, the investing workshop with I Yuli. I love that. You gave them that idea though. Like they were like, oh my God, I want to do it. I have the funds. Like, this let's is do how we giveaways. come through. This is how we come through for each other. Can That's I just say, like, literally, this is why, like, this is what I live for. That's amazing. Thank exactly. you so much to that person, Laura. Yes. I'm a. I'm going I'm to blast you on social media and tell everybody how amazing you are. That's phenomenal. Exactly. And she was like, specifically, I wanted to be for Yuli's uh, workshop tomorrow, which is uh, like investing, the like nuttiness about investing, same time, same place, 4 o'clock p.m., 7 o'clock, 4 o'clock p.m., p.t., 7 o'clock p.m., e.t. Um, how are we feeling? Do, do you want to give them like 30 more seconds to pose? Let's do it. You got, do it. You, got about ten, you got about 10 seconds. I'm refreshing right now. 10 seconds. Um, sure. How amazing is that though, that you go to an investing session and then you get money to start investing with? Like what? That is so dope. Oh, when, we put, when we started Hella Helpful, I was not thinking that there were going to be like cash giveaways, book giveaways. What? Like we are suddenly, we are Oprah at the same time. Doing we are it. Teaching, you got a gift. You got a gift. You, you got a gift. gift. It's just, it has like morphed into this beautiful so I hope you all have posted it. onto your IG stories. I hope you've tagged Misty Helpful. She's refreshing her mentions as we speak. Um, okay, we and there she goes. There she goes. She's going to do it. You know, da -da 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 -da. There she goes. Da -da 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 -da. Pick somebody. Okay. It, this is hard to say. Endorphin chaser. Endorphin chaser? Endorphin chaser. Endorphin chaser. Endorphin chaser. Duh. Someone said, Yanelli is the Latin opera. Hey. <laughs> Love it. Oh my yes. God. Okay. I was like, I was literally trying to read it as like a Spanish name. I was like, Endorfin. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that goes back to like the Zanga live journal days when people would put two words together and I'm like, imagine two. And I'm like, oh, magenta face. Oh, God, as a Mag Maggie. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Shout out to people who remember what like Zanga and live journal are. Also. Yes. Oh my goodness. Love it. So endorphin chaser, you know, Lee's going to DM you and Laura just popped into the chat and she said she wants to fund four people for tomorrow. Amazing. <sighs> That's so amazing. I love it. Well, okay. So we got endorphin chaser. We have our third winner and mm -hmm. we're going to wrap it up now with the end of this presentation. I'm going to pass it back to Yanelli and then I will see y'all soon. Let me spotlight you.
there. All right. So here we go. We're wrapping it up. So the last key step is sometimes you just got to make more money. And that is real for so many of us, especially people of color who have low income backgrounds, who think that we're going to become a teacher and we're going to be balling out of control. <clears throat> that was me. But then you're making $40,000 and after taxes, you're making way less than that and you don't understand how you're still broke. So um, definitely sometimes you just got to bring in more money. So let's see. There's a limit to how much you can cut your spending, but there's a limit on how much you can earn. I never really thought about this. I think the first person I heard say this was Ramit Sethi, um, who's a really great finance uh, guru, I guess, whatever you want to call him. Um, but he has a whole brand called I Would Teach You To Be Rich, which is awesome. And he said this at either a webinar that I saw or in his book. And I was just like, oh, yeah, like you can cut down to the point where you've cut everything that's unnecessary. But then you have your fixed expenses that are necessary that you can't cut. So you got to start moving in the other direction, which the sky's the limit, right? You could be Jeff Bezos. You can be whoever. I mean, you can literally make as much money as, as you, as you are. I mean, if you, if you want to live that kind of life. Um, but so that, that's the thing that kind of hit my brain and again, shifted my mentality. So I think once you kind of get that, you realize, all right, I need to start making some more money. And this is the perfect time to make money online because everybody is online. Like you can't, you know, go outside. Remember coronavirus. So if you, if you're like thinking about, oh, I, I've never really thought about making money online. Well, you have plenty of time now to figure it out, taking free courses or, um, you know, even for example, one of the first free ways that I started making money online was um, tutoring. Right now, schools are closed. There is a very high demand for tutors because kids desperately need it. They're not in school with their teacher all day like they're used to. And their parents are desperate for somebody to take the kid for an hour or two and give that parent a break. So if you offer your tutoring services, I'm sure that will probably be the fastest and easiest way. Obviously, you want to have some qualifications under your belt. Make sure you can spell. Make sure that, you know, you can add basics okay and then think about maybe where that works um particularly these two companies i know like a lot of my friends who are in teaching who are not in school every day all day right now they are in a group chat i have a group chat with a bunch of like thousands of educators and a bunch of them were like oh yeah i just started q kids and vip kids and you teach kids in china and china had the shutdown first so that means a lot of them were really needing tutoring and especially in china they emphasize learning english so if the parents don't speak english they need to outsource it and if they're home they get people who speak English to, uh, you know, zoom in and do video calls with the kids and teach them English. So you literally just like, this is a water bottle. This is a phone. And like the kids repeating it. So it's so easy and you can make like, you know, anywhere from I think 15 to 25 or $20 an hour, depending on your experience with kids and tutoring and academics and stuff like that. But the point is, those are two easy ones linkable there. Virtual assistant work. Right now, so many people have a new demand online for whatever social media marketing or for product sales or for e-sales whatever and they maybe never really thought about that before and they're needing a virtual assistant to help manage all of that um maybe there's an influx of emails because of coronavirus everyone's emailing and the company doesn't have is enough email support you're hiring a virtual assistant right so you can definitely do virtual assistant jobs that will allow you to make some extra side money by working online online surveys are always the go-to but i know that Sometimes you got to sit there for like an hour just to make $5 and that is not worth your time. So unless you do your research, uh, you know, online service can be great too. Again, all these images on this slide are clickable. Um, apps, you have literally all day, every day, especially on weekends now, which you can't go outside. What you can do is go through your closet, go through your shoe rack and pull out things that are in good condition that you know you, you don't need. You ain't wearing that or you don't love it anymore or whatever. And let go of them. Put them on the app. Sell them. Facebook Marketplace, whatever. There's so many things that you can do right now with all the free time that you have. And it, it, honestly, all that you cannot do is do nothing. You can't just sit at home and do nothing and complain that, oh, coronavirus, oh, we all struggling. Oh, my God, I hear my next door neighbor coughing and I'm just going to roll up in a ball in my bed and just go to sleep. No, like this is not the time for inaction. This is the time to get online and get creative with how you're going to make money. At the end of the day, there might be a person, okay, and I'm, I'm sure that they exist and they're out there somewhere, who is like, yo, I've done everything legit, everything that Yaneli said in the presentation, and I'm still at a point where I cannot do anything. I, ca I cannot pay my bill. I cannot pay my electric bill. I cannot get my phone. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to afford groceries next week. And I've done all that. I tried to get a job online. I couldn't. I tried to, you know, budget down to my necessities. My, I just lost my job and I had to pay this, you know, emergency medical thing. And now I'm literally at a point where I have nothing and I still have debt. And I can't, like, I just can't. Sometimes just like these corporations that need bailouts, just like the government 
putting a cash infusion into the economy of $1.5 trillion the first time and then more the second, sometimes you might need that cash injection. And that might mean credit. That might mean a little bit of more debt, right? And for me, what I did when I had $20,000 I started on my own and then I started doing research and I realized that my credit card interest rates were like 24, 27, 22%. And I was like, oh, hell no, this is ridiculous. So I got a personal loan and I, I, my interest rate was like, I think 9%, which was still not the best in terms of personal loans, but because I didn't have good credit and I paid off all the credit cards with that personal loan. And then every month I would just send my payment to the personal loan. Now I was paying 9% instead of 22, 24, 27% literally three times less in interest fees. So I saved myself a lot of money. Future me saved a lot of money at that time because I was minimizing my interest rate significantly and then making my monthly payment to the loan provider instead of to the credit card companies. So sometimes you might just need to borrow, okay? And that doesn't make you a bad person, a responsible person. It's not gonna mess up your credit. It doesn't reflect poorly on you. It's, I know sometimes in our community, we think like don't use credit cards or the opposite, we overuse them. But there is a happy medium right in the middle and you can live in, in that happy medium place, okay? So I did it, I, I borrowed and then I paid it back. Um, there are great personal loans out there for people even with not so great credit. But one thing I do want you to not forget is if you are gonna go that route and you're gonna borrow, make sure the personal loan that you get does not have an origination fee because it is 2020. There is so much opportunity to get loans with no origination fees, which is literally just the profit that that company keeps on top of their whatever service fee or every, anything else. So there should be no origination fee okay you should not pay an origination fee that's ridiculous there are plenty of loans again these images are clickable so if you click on them they'll take you to the top loans right now for people with great credit for people with poor credit for people who uh, don't want to pay origination fees I mean they're all listed so just you know do a little bit of research spend some time reading these articles and if this is where you are do not be afraid to ask for that help to just borrow that money put that cash infusion in but do the budgeting seriously budget like get serious because more money does not solve the problem that you're not budgeting in the first place and just because you put more money into the pot doesn't mean that all of a sudden magically you're going to have the money management skills that you didn't have before the money came in so more money is fine it's going to help you breathe easier at night sleep a little bit you but you still have to put that budget in place and make sure that part of that budget is paying back that debt okay that is everything we're gonna do the last giveaway. This is all of my social. You guys can click on those little icons. It will take you to my social media stuff. Add me on LinkedIn, do the professional thing too. I got that, I got that LinkedIn page. Um, but yeah, most importantly, follow me on YouTube, subscribe there, comment on my videos, tell me what videos you want me to post. Follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to grow my Instagram. I'm trying to get like Berna. And um, yeah, <laughs> and like, just thank you for being on this call for so long. I hope that this content was helpful. I'm happy to stick around for a few more minutes and answer some major dying questions that Berna might have pulled. But if you gotta run cause you got your kids to go feed or you got whatever you gotta go do, go, don't go do it, no judgment. I'm not gonna be mad that you left. Yes, oh my God. Please find your most excitable and representative emoji and drop it in the chat for Yanelli. I'm like, this, this, last like 70 minutes of my life delivered to me when I was 19, like we were saying before, would have changed everything. It would have changed everything. And also I got to give a lot of shout outs to the folks in the chat who are dropping resources that I have never heard of before. Never in my personal finance career have heard of some of these resources. Granted it has been a very long career, but this is why we're here to share these resources together. So I'm so, 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 so grateful. Please send Yanelli all the love, all the support. And the best way you can support her is like she said, follow her Instagram. And after that, follow her YouTube and follow every other channel that you can find. Because honestly, I mean, I know this is like the boring influencer pitch, but these numbers as vain as they are, look at like as like a vanity number as it can feel, they help to have brands and collaborators take us seriously. And then we get paid for all the free work that we do, um, which we love to do, but also like we got bills. You know, has got bills. So it helps. These numbers really do help um, if you're not like out here like, you know, Lee, uh, giving everybody their life via Venmo. So now um, we are going to open it up to q and I did extend the time on the workshop uh, on the webinar a little bit, but I want to be really conscious of Yanelli's time and her energy and her voice and her and her 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 hydration and her body heat um and so if you have questions drop them in the q a i've been looking a lot of the questions have to do with recommendations for a, a type of savings account i'm seeing that a lot um and i'm seeing i'm seeing a lot also about like 
what if you can't allocate the like like general recommended part of your budget like you know we're, we're saying like save 20 percent. what if you can so those are two places we can start i'm seeing like types types recommend types and like but what if i can't though like it hurts um so those are two things but do you want to do the giveaway first in the q a q a giveaway which one? Uh, let's do let's do a giveaway later. Let's do a couple questions first. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yes. Yeah, I would definitely say I don't know if you want to jump jump in the Q and A, but one thing I've been seeing is like, please recommend to us like your fave high yield savings accounts right now. Um, okay. So if you guys go to slide thirty four, no lies, yes, thirty four. Go to slide thirty four, and click on a the video that I posted, which has some some of the the best high yield savings accounts right now. But also just so that you don't listen to me, just so you do your own research, click on the underlined um, articles. Uh, those are pretty much the best ones right now and will have the specific information you need to make your decision. Because sometimes what it's going to be is when you look at this list and you're like, all right, let me scroll down and see what they said. Um, all right, they said VO Bank, CIT Bank, uh, American Express, or Amex Bank, H HSBC and Marcus uh, Citizen Access. So now that's a, still a long list right there. But, but which one of those though? Now I got to pick one of those. First of all, you have to figure out what matters to you when it comes to banking. Is it the minimum required because you only got $25 to start? If that's what it is, then look for the one that has a minimum balance that works for you. If it's interest and you out here, literally all you want is that high interest, then look for the one with the highest interest that also has a manageable minimum deposit. If all you care about is customer service, go on these blogs and compare them and find out who is out here saying that these banks have good customer service or bad. That what you care about, what matters to you is really what's going to be a big deal. Okay. That's how you make the decision. Because the other thing you can, that I think it's pretty important to know is that it doesn't matter which savings account you start with. You can change it anytime you want. It's a little annoying, but it's not impossible. And one of the worst things that people do is actually, if you walk down the street and tap a hundred people, only one or two of them are going to say that they changed their, their bank since they started banking when they were 16. Most people, over 90% of people, they just keep the bank they had. They don't think about, why? Because they don't know that banks are offering you services and you should be the one choosing the one that's giving you the best thing that works for you. It's just like when you go to the store. If you go to Target and you see that the, the coat you want is too expensive at Target and they got the same one at Kmart for half off, you're going to leave Target and go to Kmart, right? Because they have a better deal for you. So same thing with banks. You go to these banks and you find out what do they have. Make a little chart like, Minimum deposit required, interest rate offered, you know, uh, maximum withdrawals allowed, right? All the little things and then write it down and look and see, oh, that one is, mm -mm, that's not going to work for me. Or, oh, that minimum deposit required is way too high. Ain't nobody got that. No, you, ha you can go through and kind of talk out loud and see what works for you. And then that's how you make your choice. And the moment it doesn't work for you anymore, change it to a better account. Yes, beautiful. There's somebody in the chat saying Anya, Anya Christine, um, also saying check your credit unions if you have one. 100%. Uh, sometimes the uh, oh, well, their credit union in Seattle has no minimum on their savings and has a 4% APY. Like some of these credit unions can pull off amazing. Honey, yes, rates. take advantage of that. If you have that right in your local community, be up in that credit union every day. Make yes. friends with them, be up in there, put all your money in there because that's amazing. Yes. Okay. I got two more questions that sort of sum up what a lot of people are saying in here are asking you in the, in the Q and a, um, I got a lot of questions about debt versus savings. I got mm -hmm. debt. I'm trying to build my savings in general. Like, do I pause my debt right now? Do I attack my debt? Like what should I prioritize if I'm confused between the two? If you're on this call, it's because the title of the session, I have no freaking savings related to you, which means you need to prioritize saving right now. This is not a time to focus on debt because a lot of debt collectors right now are being very forgiving. Unless you have a lot of cushion in your bank account, like me, I'm one of those crazy people that once I was like really in a lot of debt and I saw myself in rock bottom, I was like, I'll never want to be that way again. So now I keep eight months of living expenses in my checking, in my savings account. Lord, not in my checking account, in my savings account. And why? It's because I know that a day like today was going to come. I have not, thank goodness, I haven't um, lost my main source of income, which is my full-time job. But what if I did? I, I need to be prepared. Like, that's a possibility, right? Like, you know, and right now I split rent with my boyfriend. What if he decides he doesn't want to be with me and he moves out tomorrow and now it's just me in this apartment and I got to pay the full rent and I lost my job. I have to, like, those are very real things that could happen. And I have to be able to say, like, okay, am I prepared for the worst case scenario? Hmm. Well, what is the worst case scenario? What's something that could happen that's bad that I don't want to think about? Let me think about it so that I can prepare for it. Because too many of us were like, don't think about that. Oh, my God, that's negative. No. 
uh, there's no other way to prepare unless you imagine that scenario happening and then thinking to yourself, what would I want to do if that situation did happen? I would want to be able to rely on my savings account. So let me build that up right now. So definitely focus all your extra dollars on your savings right now and pay just the minimum balance on all your debts. Once this whole coronavirus thing is over, you can reprioritize, keep a little chunk of savings that makes you feel good and start smashing that debt. 100%. And also, there is a debt talk this Thursday with Nasima. I know you guys have seen Nasima in the chat because Nasima mentioned, I might be hiring. And people were like, what? Honey, yes. <laughs> you hiring yes, for a yes. what? Um, Nasima at Financially Intentional is doing a debt talk on Thursday. And I believe there are still tickets available for that one. So definitely, if you have more debt questions, for sure, direct them towards Nasima on Thursday. Take um, advantage. I, like, I have Take like advantage. A, a question and a half. So okay. this next question oh. is a money question. And the, the, the question after that is kind of more of a fun question. Money okay. question. Um, someone is saying, what do you recommend doing when you're the only earner, but you have family financial responsibilities that stop you from building an emergency fund quickly? I feel like that's a very like... BIPOC first gen child yes. kind of question. One hundred percent. So I would say sit down, do the budget the way that we talked about, where you literally sit down and do your 50, 30, 20, you do your needs, your wants, your future goals, everything. Then you look at it and say, okay, in order to do this and support my family the way that I the way that is reasonable. Let me, well, let me start with the way that is reasonable because when I graduated college, my parents were like, oh, look at Janelli. She left the hood. She went to Brown University. She got the Ivy League degree. She came back to Bushwick and she got a job as a teacher. She's a professional working woman. She's going to pay for her little brother's Catholic school tuition. She's going to pay for the cable bill and the Wi-Fi bill. She is going to help us with groceries. She's also going to pay for mom to go and get her hair done. And it was like, yeah, I, I do want to do that. I do. I want to do all those things, but I literally cannot afford to. You are literally choking me and I'm just trying to come up for air. You're my family. You love me. You want what's best for me. Let me show you my budget. Let me sit down and show you this 50, 30, 20 thing that I just did after I went to this webinar last night. And let me show you where I'm at. This is what I can give you. This is what I can afford to do for you. This is what I'm willing to do within reason. No, I cannot pay for your hair appointments every you know, two weeks, mommy. No, I'm not, I can't do that anymore. But there's so many YouTube videos that will show you how to do your hair at home. So let's go to CVS and buy you a hair straightener and get you to do it on your own, girl. Or maybe stop, stop, stop straightening your hair and get the avocado mix that uh, Herberna's doing at home, okay? Let's figure out how to do that instead, right? But the point is you have to be realistic about what it is that you're actually giving because if your family is getting to the point where they're literally depending on you and they're not thinking about it and you don't want to, that's an awkward conversation and it's tense, it might be time for you to embrace the uncomfortability. Y'all all in the house together anyway. Sit down and have this real talk and tell them, I love you. I want to keep supporting you. But if I keep doing it the way I'm doing it right now, I can't support me or you. Okay. And I'm going to be drowning. So let's, let's make it more reasonable. Look at my budget. And again, show them your budget. Show. I literally sat with my parents and showed them my spreadsheet. My mom was like, why are you being so aggressive? You don't have to pay the credit cards off in two years. Pay them off in six years. And I was like, oh, but mom, let's go ahead and look at this credit card calculator and look how much interest I would be flushing down the toilet if I do it in six years instead of two. No, I want to be aggressive so I can use that extra money and give it to the family and use it for vacation and do whatever I want with it. So you got to kind of like come in with the confidence to share like where you are and like your mentality and, and be rock solid on that. But also obviously don't just cut them off. So once you have a reasonable amount where it's like, okay, this is a reasonable amount I can contribute to help my family. And this is all of my like budget stuff that I need to do right now. It, then you can figure out the difference between what you're earning and then make up the difference, either online jobs or borrowing if you really need to in the worst case scenario. But you just make up the difference with those other alternatives. But you don't have to figure out like all of it. You just want to sit down and really know what is the gap and then come up with a plan for that gap, even if it's temporary. Beautiful. I saw lots of people in the chat being like, that is real. No one talks about this. And I think what's really, what I really picked up on was like, I have never shown my family my budget, which is funny because I'm like always showing my budget off when I like do workshops and I like speak in front of people on my videos, but I've never been like, Hey, I like, I want to help you look at these numbers though. Like, even if you don't believe me that I can't help, Maybe you think I'm being selfish or you think I'm being airheaded about something, but here are these numbers and numbers don't lie. So that's super important. Okay. Very last question. You know Somebody, what, wait, oh yeah, real ahead, quick. You, you know what else? You know what else I love about what I did that I didn't realize it was going to be a, a byproduct. Mm -hmm. When I sat down to show my family the budget, my brother who is, oof, what, he's like 25 or something like that. He's a little younger than me. He was listening in. He was looking. Mm -hmm. And 
And little did I know, a couple weeks later, he texts me, yo, Janely, can you, um, can we, can I come to your place and like, we can sit down and talk about my budget because Ugh. I was like, yes, <laughs> I will cook some rice and beans and you will come <laughs> over and we will do your budget. <laughs> yes. Okay. Like I have wanted to help him for so long, but you have to want the help. You can't, you can yes. preach money all day to people. And it's just like church, like all oh, the Jehovah witness come knocking on your door. If you're not, no, you're going to hide, shut the light. You're going to pretend you're not home because you're not trying to hear it. But the moment you are trying to hear the message of whoever the messenger is that wants to deliver it to you, that's when you will come seeking the help. And I was so happy that just showing the budget and talking about it, <sighs> it, it popped into his mind and he came to help to me for help. So yes. it might help your family in a way that you didn't even think it would. Exactly. Because that's where we're learning our very first money habits is from our family. Like imagine, I'm just imagining if my, like, I love my older siblings and I love my parents, but like if somebody, if I saw my older sibling sit down with my parents and go, here's a budget, I'd be like, budget? <laughs> What's that? What? It seems like you're getting your life together in a way. And also it's coming from a person that I feel safe with, a family member. It's not a Dave Ramsey. It's not a Rumi, whatever. Like it's not a random stranger. It's like, you know me on a very sort of like molecular level and you're talking about budgeting. Hmm. That makes me curious, which is so key, especially when we're talking about community care and family care. I mean, the reason we're all here is because it was hard for us to listen to anybody else that doesn't look like us, doesn't speak like us. So like who knows our family, who knows our stories more than our family and who can influence us more than our family? There's really, no one like really comes close. Um, okay. Final question. We can make it really fast, but basically somebody was asking, you know, you have amazing energy. And how do you keep it up is what they were saying. Just like, you are so motivated. Ooh. What do you do? I, like, I read that as like, what drugs are you taking? <laughs> what YouTube videos are you watching? Like, what are you snorting in the morning? What she drugs said, do I take? She said, let me find my drugs. Here's mine. I take vitamin C. I, I, take, I take a women's multivitamin. I take okay. an iron, an <laughs> iron every day, iron pill every day. I'm serious, y'all. I'm. You see, I'm like... How druggies pop pills, that's how I pop my vitamins every okay. day. I am about my vitamins, okay? I'm like a be a heat that I'm an old lady in here with my pills every day. My iron, my vitamin C, I take my women's multivitamin. I'll tell you which ones I take if y'all want them in the chat. Drink so much water. I'm Eat sweating. healthy most of the time. Yes. Just be, go to bed early, wake up early, like exercise, move your body. Even if you don't like working out, maybe just dance, like to put on some Cardi B and start twerking. You start sweating. You will start mm. sweating. Move your body. Like you have, like these things, they impact us so much. It's so funny. Cause like the other day I was, I was doing an event and this was like a month ago in, in the CUNY, it says CUNY schools in New York city. It's like the public colleges. They asked me to come speak. So I spoke at the end of the event, this girl came up to me and I swear to God, I could not recognize her. I was like, she was like, don't you remember me? I was like, no, do I, like, do I know you from middle school or something? I, I don't know you. And it was literally this girl that I was really close with in high school through another friend of mine. We didn't go to the same high school, but she was a, a friend of a mutual friend. And mm. she used to come over to my apartment. We would watch TV together. We, me and her watched the entire uh, Beyonce digital album when she released on oh, digital yeah. drop. Yes. Me and her watched it together. I, I'm talking about like, she was a good acquaintance, like a good friend. And she looked so different. I don't know what she's dealing with, what issues, but like the depression, she was overweight. She was clearly not, not well. And, mm. and I just felt so bad. I was like, you know what it is? The way that I create the life that I want every day when I wake up, I'm like, what do I want to do today that is going to make me who I want to be? If I stay sleeping till 12 p.m., I'm going to be a turtle. I'm going to be so groggy. I got to wake up early. I have to make myself drink a gallon of water. I have to make sure I'm eating greens and not just eating papitas all the time. <laughs> I have to, like, I have to, like, and it's annoying because it kind of sounds like, you know, oh, you got to eat your vegetables oh, and you got to drink your water yeah. and you yeah. got to do the right thing. And it's like, but yo, it's true. It affects everything. It affects your mental health. It affects your physical wellness. Everything about you is like what you put into your body is what you put out. So I definitely mm. like eating clean, drinking a lot of water, taking your vitamins, getting good sleep. Literally, like when you go to bed, the room should be pitch black. There should <sighs> not be window light. There should not be a TV on like pitch black. So yes. that you go into a cave and go to sleep, like for real, <laughs> these things, like these things impact you so much. And <sighs> I get that question a lot, but the reality is like, I don't know, like, it's just natural. I don't mm. drink coffee. I don't drink any coffee. I don't drink any caffeinated tea, nothing like that. I don't know. I just like, I feel like I just have this natural energy. People say all the time, like, give me some of your energy. Yeah. But I, Siphon I mean, it. I, yeah, man. I just, I get a lot of sleep. I'm not up at late at night watching Netflix. I don't do like, I'll, I'll go to bed. I will drink my water in the morning. I'll take my vitamins. I'll do an, a workout here. Do my workout. Just go to sleep. Get some rest. Go work out. Sleep. Move your body. Eat right. Take your vitamins. Drink your water. 
twerk uh, a little, sweaty in the kitchen while you're cooking. Okay? Yes. <laughs> just, aren't you all glad that she's a YouTuber? Like, <laughs> literally, um, like the, the response when you meet somebody like this in this day and age, in like God's year of 2020, is like, you should be on YouTube. God, you should be on social media. Funny. God bless that you are already on social media, and we can, you can, we can, we can give and and receive your energy on the internet mm-hmm. whenever we want because you've already put so much content out there. Um, but also in the spirit of preserving yeah. Yanelli's energy and and all the all, everything that she's given us, we got to wrap this thing up. Do we want to do our last giveaway? Let's do it. Last giveaway. Okay, Let's for the almost 200 of y'all who have stuck to the end because you knew, of course, that she was going to be dropping like financial gems, but there's a Yay. prize at the end. Okay, so, right. so giveaway. We're going to do $75 this time. $75. $75. Are you ready? So again, the rules are you post, take your phone right now. It's happening right now, not later, right now. You take a picture, put it on your Instagram story, tag Miss Be Helpful, and make sure you're already following Miss Be Helpful. You don't got to tag me. It's Miss Be Helpful. She's going to be looking through her mentions in like a minute and she's going to randomly pick somebody who's in her mentions and you're going to get $75 via Venmo. It is real. She's already given three people, three people free money. I haven't sent it to them yet, but I will at the end of this. Yes. But I, 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 I oh. DM them already. But yes, three people are waiting on their money and it will come tonight in whenever this is over. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, and then somebody has already volunteered to fund our next giveaway for tomorrow, which is so nuts. But now is your time. Take your phone right now. You should be posting. You should be taking a weird front camera selfie. Doesn't matter. Uh, as long as you are following Miss Be Helpful on IG, tagging Miss Be Helpful, put it on Instagram stories right now because she's going to yeah. poke her little circle and look at those mentions. Um, I'm so excited to look through, like, I've been getting a few mentions too, and I'm like, oh, I'm not part of the giveaway, but I'm so excited to see people's, like, my favorite things have been people being, like, cleaning the bathroom while I'm listening to Hella Helpful, yeah. or, like, watering my plants while listening to Hella Helpful. I'm like, we're really in your guys' life. Do it. Do it. Oh, my goodness, yes. What do you think, 30 more seconds? I'm doing it now. I should do it right now. Oh, it's happening. Right. $75 refresh- going to somebody. Sorry, sorry, I'll refresh it. Okay, here we go. Refresh, refresh. Ah. <laughs> All right. I'm literally, I'm just literally going to tap on the screen 14 times. Yep. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Who is it? The underscore matic. The matic. The underscore. D-A. The matic. The underscore matic. Yep. M-A-T-I-C? M-A-T-I-C. Yep. Ah! $75 to you, the matic. So I'm going to DM you right now so you can send me your Venmo. Yes! $75. Maybe it's because I'm hungry, but I'm already like, that would buy me at least two extra large. That would, pizzas. that would be, that would look so pretty in my high yield savings account. Exactly. <laughs> okay. I should have learned from your lesson. I was just thinking like two extra large Signore pesto chicken pizzas no. for tonight. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I haven't learned my lesson. I haven't learned my lesson. Oh my gosh. Okay. I want to preserve Yanelli's energy and love. Please drop your final love, 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 loving emojis in the chat for Yanelli because she has given us like, a, if, if you feel like she's given you your entire life, if she's helped you with one to 17 parts of your life today, literally if somebody was like mind, body, and soul, I am fixed. So, so, so sweet. <laughs> I am oh fixed because <laughs> you covered literally everything. Um, but the best thing that you can do to help Yanelli, of course, is to follow, follow on Instagram. Is that the biggest ask? You've got yes, following yes, Instagram? yes. YouTube, follow me, YouTube, Instagram. Um, I have a Patreon that's connected to my YouTube. If you want to do a dollar a month, you can do that too, but not necessary. I'm not asking you to if you want to and if you can. But yeah, that's pretty much it. All of my content is free and it will always be that way. So um, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you so much. It's, it's amazing to be able to see these comments. I'm actually going to save the chat and go through them a little more later so I can get that joy that I need before I go yes. to bed because that's just amazing. I love it's it. It's so good. What? Is there a way that I can save the chat right now? I'm like afraid to stop yeah. the thing. Yeah, if you on the bottom, if you go next to where it says type message here, there's three little dots. Click mm-hmm. click it and press save chat. <laughs> I'm learning. Yes, chat girl. saved. Oh Done. my gosh. Okay, let's wrap this up. Thank you so much to Yanelli. Oh, again, a reminder, she said she has a Patreon and she did this all for free. I want you to connect the dots there. <laughs> She said she has a Patreon. She's doing this for free. So I would go look for it if, if I were you. Um, and if you want more Hella Helpful, of course, hellahelpful.com is where you register and get all the registration links. But we are doing a money yoga class tomorrow at 11 a.m. PT, 2 p.m. ET. And then we have an investing class at 4 p.m. PT, 7 o'clock ET. 
Thank you, Yanelli. Thank you so, 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 so much. I'm, I'm, I'm wishing you love and safety and sanitation and sanity <laughs> in your, in your apartment in Newark right now. Thank you so That's much. A for beautiful, everything. beautiful bundle. Thank you yes. for organizing this, for getting, you know, getting us all motivated and together and in a Slack chat so we could do this. This is amazing. And it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you. So thank you, Berna. And thank you to everybody who joined us. I hope you got a lot of value and yes. love you all. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye everybody. And we are saving this recording. It's coming. Bye y'all. Thanks everybody.